Hey everyone, ChatGPT Atlas just dropped, a brand new AI web browser from OpenAI. And did it just kill Google Chrome, the biggest, most popular web browser on the planet? We're gonna break that down. We're gonna tell you how it actually works, what it's really good at, and then what it's actually really bad at. And we'll tell you, have we actually switched our default browser over from Google Chrome to Atlas? Kieran. We have some news that OpenAI, they're on a tear. They keep releasing products and they're going head to head with Google and Perplexity uh, by launching their own web browser. And they've released ChatGPT Atlas. First of all, don't love Atlas as a name, but I also don't hate it. I think it's supposed to be intentionally ambiguous, but like, you know, it's fine. It's fine. But basically the big deal here is that one, you have a web browser with ChatGPT native to it. This product, ChatGPT Atlas, is available for all ChatGPT users, including free. Wow. So anybody Huge. who's a ChatGPT user can use this product. And so you say, hey, what can it actually do? The biggest thing it can do is it has agent mode. And that's where it can take over your screen and do a task for you. So you can put it into agent mode. You can have it do deep research. It, you can have it plan a weekend, outline a short story on a canvas. Here are some of the basic prompts it is giving you. This is literally Atlas after I just did basic signup. So you could import any passwords or bookmarks you have in Chrome or Safari, and you can get those right into Atlas. And then all you do is sign in with ChatGPT. And that's, and that's where I'm at right here. And so this is what it looks like. Every new tab is a default chat GPT window to, to go and add stuff in. Now, Kieran, do you want, I, I, I had to do a couple things before the show. Do you want me to give you the run rundown of some of the basic tasks I had to do? Yeah, let, okay. let's take a look at it. I think for our listeners, this is really an extension of their operator product that they used to have, well, they still do have within ChatGPT itself where you have an autonomous agent kind of do things. It did really not, it didn't really gain any popularity because it was not uh, very uh, consistent or reliable, but this is a agentic browser, like a version of that, that really is a true agentic browser. And the interesting thing about this browser, Kieran, that I, I saw online is that it's built on Chromium, the, the infrastructure for Google Chrome. So all the extensions for this browser are, are built on like the Chrome extension infrastructure. Yeah, I saw a really good tweet that said, uh, it was hilarious, like Chat, the ChatGPT Atlas launched and Google stock tanked. And then people realized it was just Chrome with ChatGPT and went straight back up to where it was from prior to the well, launch. Uh, well, <laughs> it went straight back up because of a rumor Google Anthropic deal, but yes. Ah, okay, it, I did so, see so that. that. But, but that's, a, that's a whole nother different show. But the, the thing here is that it is, if you're used to using Chrome, it's like Chrome with native chat GPT, okay? Nice. And it, it is, to me, more bare bones and more basic than Perplexity's Comet browser. Which you are a huge fan of. Which I'm a huge fan of, use every day. I believe you, you use Comet pretty regularly as well, right? Yeah, they've done a good job. Okay, so I came out, I wanted to test agent mode. Because this is so bare bones, the two reasons you would want to use the chat GPT Atlas project is for agent mode and because it is the first to bring a memory to the browser. So all of the memory and context of the conversations you've had in ChatGPT now come into your browser experience. Those are the two big upsides. So memory from your actual ChatGPT account gets ported into yes. the browser and OpenAI are also trying to convince sites to log in with ChatGPT, so this is pretty interesting, which means you have portable memory on the web. Correct, and what's interesting about it, Karen, is the first thing you do is you, is you sign with ChatGPT, then you import any passwords or bookmarks from Google Chrome or Safari. The third thing you do, you get a, a dialogue in setup to turn on memory. Mm. So it's, wow. it's not just like, oh, there's memory and you can go into settings and configure it. It's like, they want everybody to turn on memory. Give the listeners why you think Bring your memory with you online is valuable. So yeah, so let me give you an example. I did the Zillow query. I'm gonna to talk to you about it in a second. But anytime you're asking an agent to do something in the web browser, if it has context of what you care about, where you live, who your family is, like let's say you have the agent plan a trip for your family 
and it already knows that, hey, I'm married to Kimberly, I have Mari and Bo, and we really like, you know, beach vacations, then we're way ahead of mm. me having to write long, in-depth instructions. I can just ask it to plan a vacation for a certain date, and it's going to give me options for our family and to, de and to destinations that it knows we like, right? Exactly. Our memory is huge. Like, it personalizes the web for you in a way that was never possible with just kind of like history of browsing, which is kind of how it was done in the past. Yes. Uh, it really personalizes every instant to you. It, it brings in, it, I want to see some other use cases, but it actually brings in the conversation. Do you have to rethink websites and apps for the age of memory? Uh, I think that is something that we really have to consider. So like, for example, I, I, if you want to get it, I, I want to show it in motion. So let's say search Zillow for single family homes under $200,000 in Vermont, which is going to be like hardly anything, right? In Vermont, you got under $200,000? Yeah, but it's like shed. a whole state. But I, I, what I'm, what's, okay. what's interesting is I, I could use your browser to search Zillow for my, yes, continue. And then it's going to go and use the browser to do that. So you can do that from chat GPT, just like I did, or you can browse to Zillow, which is what I did. I went to Zillow.com and Kieran, all I did was go to Zillow. I didn't log in or anything. And I said, search and browse Zillow for any land under $20,000 that would be good investment to turn into campsites to rent. So like basic land, I want to turn them into campsites and rent them out for like $40, $40 a night kind of deal, okay? And it worked for four minutes and it explored rural land and it found a bunch of interesting listings. Like I actually might buy 12 acres of land for $5,000. Seems like a pretty high return to my home state of West Virginia. Like, Why not? Doesn't, it doesn't take that many, you know, you probably pay back on that's probably a year to 18 months. But it gave, you know, with very little context, it gave me real results and it pulled some of them up in Zillow. And I think what I don't know is can I say, show me this one. And let's see if it will take over and up. Oh, so it's gonna take over my browser. The one thing I've noticed, and this is like sub 24 hours of using Atlas, right? Is that Kieran, I do think that the browser agent in Atlas does seem to be more reliable and smarter than, than the browser agent in Perplexity Comet. Oh, wow. Like, okay, so it's consistently doing the task much more it's more accurate in terms of doing completion, completing the task? Yeah, so what I just walked you through with the, that property example, I literally typed in that sentence and walked away. I did nothing. And look, see? It's finding that exact land from the listing that it gave me, right? And is it, I did nothing. I just said, hey, can you show this to me? And it's able to navigate Zillow and pull this up for me. Now it's not wicked right. fast. Like you could argue maybe I could have found it just as fast or faster myself. But if you're doing a lot of things at once and you want to do stuff like this in the background, like it's pretty compelling. There is going to have to be a, uh, like the the when chat is a good UX experience versus when just clicking it yourself is a good UX experience. Like there are, I, I don't think everything gets instrumented into a chat UX. But to your point, where I think this is valuable is when you can just have 10 tabs open and have the browser agent go do things for you. But the other big thing is it turns everything into context. So in the old way, you would have pulled up that property and then you might wanna go and do some analysis on uh, like a model to say, hey, if I, if I buy this, when yeah. can I get my money back? And I have to go like pull that data. I have to go like paste that data somewhere, put it into spreadsheets, all of these things. But now it's just context in a window. So you can just say to the AI, okay, like take this and now build like a, ROI model of how I can extract money from my investment. And so it turns the web into like context for your agent. I think that is a valuable uh, new way that we can use the internet. Uh, I completely agree. And so you can do a lot of things. One of the things I love to do with browser-based agents is turn them into a website auditor. And so one of the things, Kieran, I think you and I should do for probably next week or the week after is we should do a synthetic audience and detailed website audit prompt and use that 
in Atlas, uh, at, excuse me, and use that in Atlas and give every basic, everybody basically a professional website auditor for free. Yeah, so I want, so actually it's funny, you said the thing that I immediately went to as well when you brought this page, which is what, what you're describing for our listeners is there is a way now that you can create a quote unquote AI version of your customer. So you basically train the AI to react to things in the way that your customer would, and you, you give the AI some internal information and some external information about your customer. And what you're saying is I can basically come in and have the, the browser agent act like my customer, Yes. go through our website and provide a bunch of feedback, which is like a user review. And that that is actually a great, great use case because now you can have a bunch of these agents reviewing things for you and providing you feedback like your customer. And we can do that tutorial for you in an upcoming episode. Yeah, if you want that, leave a comment, like the video on YouTube. Uh, and, and if we get a bunch of interest, we will do that because I do think it's a really good use case. Because even without that, Kieran, it's able to do a very good audit. Audit, And I just had it be like, hey, I'm Kip Bodner. I'm CMO of HubSpot. Like, help me do a draft of an audit for my team. And it, What's it, the it's pretty good. Value prop, conversion rate optimization, technical speed and performance. It's pretty great. It's like a, like a website audit. Like a yeah, website it's like grader. a full website audit, but much faster. Content and SEO strategy, social proof. And that's with like a very bare bones, like nothing prompt, right? We, you have it act like your customer and you give it real instructions of what you want. It will be very good. Right. We just dropped 10 powerful prompts that you can use with Atlas right now. You can run deep dives on competitive intelligence, conduct gap analyses, auditing your messaging, and more. These prompts are your complete toolkit for marketing research with Atlas. Get it right now. Scan the QR code or click the link in the description. Now, uh, let's get back to the show. The other thing, Kieran, I had to go to ramp.com and just be like, hey, our friends over at Ramp, they use a bunch of cool marketing tech. Like, what's all the marketing technology they use? And it broke down all of the different infrastructure they that's use cool. to do their marketing, which is really cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. People trying to do outreach and vendors trying to figure out. Yeah, like, but even, but even if you're like, hey, I really like what that company's doing. If you have this and you have a the summary of their strategy, you can really reverse engineer it really well. Right. Would you use, when you think about your use so far of Atlas, do you think it's a replacement for your current browser or an extension or like an added, a new thing, right? You're not going to yeah. change using Chrome day to day for Atlas. You'll just use Atlas for specific uh, AI agentic use cases. So this is what I would tell everybody watching the show today. I believe that we are in the AI sprawl era in that all these AI companies are doing lots of things and they're doing them kind of good, but it's very like, none of them are like super deep, like, oh my gosh, this is the best way ever to do this thing. It's like, oh, this is a better way. And so what that means is I, you, you have to be a more advanced user and know which specific use cases different products are better at. And so right. for me, who's a more advanced user, I will use Atlas anytime I want to do something agentic to take over my browser because I do think it's better than Comet for that right. purpose. Wow. I do. In my, it's pretty in my, huge. What's, what it's not as good at is it doesn't have some of the other features that I have in Comet. Comet has shortcuts that I like a lot. I think the Perplexity Pro Max Assistant is just as good as the Assistant in, in the browser that I've seen here. Perplexity also, Comet also has a voice mode and a summarization mode, which is really valuable. So this is definitely much lighter weight than Comet. Right. So I would definitely, what's interesting is Google Chrome still my default browser. Same as me. I'm not <laughs> willing yet to, and part of that is compatibility. Like we're recording this on Riverside. You can, Riverside only works on Google Chrome. Like there are some things that only work on Google Chrome. And these new browsers, it's going to be a while before they really take over. But what I will tell you, and if you're watching the show, you've got some cool marketing hacks that we've kind of alluded to and we're going to show you in more in-depth in future episodes. But if you have, like, documents you want taken over, forms you want filled, research you want done, Atlas is going to be a very interesting tool for that, especially if you're already on ChatGPT and you already have some context and memory inside of ChatGPT. I don't know, Kieran, if I was not a ChatGPT user, just coming into this cold, if I would use Atlas. Yeah, I think my main takeaway is this is the 
portability of memory. And I think yes. that is a different way that we're going to use the web, which is, and it makes ChatGPT stickier because if they build products that get better because of memory, then you're going to continually want to use that AI assistant. So their browser is a great extension of ChatGPT, but it's way more valuable than any other browser because it has memory. You're going to be able to log into apps. Those apps are going to be able to personalize that experience for you because it will have memory. And so you'll be able to bring your memory with you. I still think Google are releasing agentic features into Chrome and they have the distribution. Yes. I think it's very, 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 very hard for someone to beat out Chrome. But to your point, it's a good add-on if I want to bring ChatGPT with me plus memory to the web. So I think what's interesting and what I would conclude, you've got, we've got a lot of awesome founders and marketers and leaders watching the show. What's interesting, right, Kieran, is Google has Chrome and its distribution as well as Google Apps. And if you're on Google Apps and you're already on Chrome, like, is that better than like having just memory and chat GPT? In many ways it is. Then you yeah. have chat GPT, which is kind of the primary adoption, like assistant co-pilot use case. And it has memory and now it has Atlas. Then you have perplexity, which uses a bunch of different AI models in its assistant versus just a small set like OpenAI, And it's got its own browser that's more advanced, but doesn't have the distribution, but does have deep integration to your Google products and everything else. It's gonna be very interesting to see which of those in the long term wins out. History would tell us that Google has the biggest opportunity. And if they do not win out, it's because they will have not innovated fast enough to what the market needs and wants, right? Yeah. Google's to lose. When you have distribution and you're already entrenched into user habits, it really is yours to lose. Yes. And I think they are releasing a really good product. And so I have a lot of faith that their agents integrated into Chrome are going to be very, very good. But I, yeah, I think that's a good synopsis, right? Like uh, it, each of these have their different use cases, but for the average user, is this going to be, you're gonna see a lot of YouTube videos that are telling you this is the death of everything. Uh, they've launched the browser. All browsers are, de are dead. I would say this is cool. It's interesting. It is 100% not a Chrome killer. It, what it is right now it is a great way to have AI use your web browser for you. That's what right. Atlas is. And I do think an Atlas is of operator. currently best at that. And so, yes, they used to have this product called Operator. It's basically a new version of that that actually works and is much faster and much smarter. And if you have dumb repeatable tasks that you need to do in a web browser, I would use Atlas. That's what I'm telling you. Or if you have these special hacks that you want to do, and we're going to do follow-up shows with either Atlas or, or Perplexity Comet, where we use more of the these AI browsers to do cool marketing and sales and growth hacks. But I still don't think that that means it should be your primary browser yet. Use, have fun, don't replace your Chrome. <laughs> that, I mean, I think that's our take. I would definitely experiment with it and find some of the use cases in your in your day to day work that you want to outsource to a browser agent to do that. And I do think that the Atlas browser agent is going to be better because of all the memory and context it has about you. The tricky thing is OpenAI hasn't blended work and personal chat GPT account memory at all. So like they're still very separate. It's going to be clunky for a while. You yeah. know, AI is awesome, but it's going to take a while to really work the way that we ideally want it to work. But go try Atlas. It's available to anybody. It's for free. You can go try uh, try that website audit hack. That's really cool. We'll come back with a more detailed version of that. Uh, but we'd love to hear. Drop us comments of what your take of Atlas is, and we'll see you real soon on Marketing Against the Grain. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history. Calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot. Grow better.